Uh, well, you might have noticed uh, that uh, the show business fortunes of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle uh, have not been doing too well lately. Uh, Spotify, the podcast giant, has cancelled their 20 million dollar deal and uh, they don't want to work with them anymore and we also hear that Netflix are very unhappy with them as well uh, because their ideas are rubbish and uh, they're not very productive and frankly they're not very talented. That seems to be the feeling. And in fact, uh, a, a talent agency, uh, Supremo, in Hollywood, a very powerful man called Jeremy Zimmer, uh, was asked about all of this. And uh, he said, uh, well, turns out Meghan Markle was not a great audio talent. That's referring to her podcast series or uh, um, archetypes. Uh, she made 12. They weren't very successful. Turns out Meghan Markle was not a great audio talent or necessarily any kind of talent. Uh, let's talk to uh, my friend, colleague and excellent TV critic of The Sun, Ali Ross. Hello, Ali. Morning, Kevin. How are you? I'm all right. Now, uh, I don't suppose I should really be talking about people with no talent uh, who get on screen, because here I am, but uh, that's... <laughs> yeah, we both are, Kevin. <laughs> uh, but ser seriously... Oh, Eric, uh, you're home. <laughs> Meghan Markle and H Harry, uh, it does seem to be the problem that they've got nothing to sell. Uh, that guy Bill Simmons from Spotify said if they're not moaning on about the royal family, nobody mm. cares who... What, the, what it is they have to say. And uh, some of their ideas that they pitch to Netflix are hilarious. My favourite, Harry's idea, Emily in Paris, only with a man. <laughs> uh, now, but I... I, what I, I think, laugh. Channel 4 will make that. Yeah, they, they will, they will. But uh, what I think it gives rise to is a discussion about the, the whole business of being famous for being famous. That's what I think that Harry and Meghan thought they could achieve. Because of who they are, people will just give them money. And the more famous they get, the more money they will get because they get more famous. And so what I was thinking was for nearly a quarter of a century, we've had the reality TV syndrome, right, mm. where people go on to Big Brother or they go on to Love Island or, you know, and then uh, they expect then to be given TV series and to become literally celebrities who are just famous. They've got nothing to offer except their fame. Now, if you think about it, over the years, 25 years, nearly 25 years, Big Brother, I think, started in 2000 or something, uh, it has produced very, very, very few lastingly famous people. So if you've got no talent, if you've got nothing to offer except your fame itself, it won't last long. No, the, 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 there's one or two exceptions, and I'm not saying talent, but Alison Hammond is one of the biggest stars in British TV. Yep, at the yep, moment. yep, those, yep. And, and she came via Big Brother two or th three, I think it was actually, along with Kate Lawler, who's uh, also uh, forged a career in radio. Um, but that is the very top end of the market we're yeah, talking. Yeah. And there's so many of these shows. I, I, would you remember, for instance, who even won I'm a Celebrity 2022? Um, no. Jill Scott. But the, that, that's the level of turnover of these things. Um, they, they are here today, gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they genuinely go into it believing they have some talent as well. Just the talent for being them and being adorable and lovable and indispensable. And it's they find out very brutally that they're none of those things. Uh, I remember Kem Setine from a couple of series of Love Island ago. And he was releasing records. He was get, had his own ITV2 show. And I saw him crop up on Soccer Aid the other week. That was the first time in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Before you know it, you're, you're hanging around nightclubs doing personal appearances for a grand yeah. and probably snogging someone around the back of it and thinking, hey, showbiz, I've arrived. Yeah, but it's comparisons can be made between these people and Meghan and Harry because I think that Meghan in particular with... Uh, uh, um, uh, um, archetypes uh, you know harry as she hasn't done anything apart from his book but what i think they thought they could do it didn't really matter what they said didn't really matter what was on their podcasts or what was on their television programs because yeah. it's them lovable them 
and famous yeah, yeah. that famous them, it's going to succeed. But of course, as she found out with archetypes, I don't know if you listened to it, but it was a cure for insomnia, absolute dreary claptrap. And despite mm. the fact that it's the very famous Duchess of Sussex, Duchess of Netflix, uh, uh, that she won't be for much longer, uh, uh, people just didn't want to know. Uh, yeah. Harry's discovering the same thing. All those two have to market is their own victimhood, and people tired of that so quickly. Mm. In fact, I think it was one opera documentary, and that was it. People realised, as uh, someone from Spotify said, they are a pair of grifters. Yeah, I think, I, think was, I think the term was slightly stronger than that, wasn't it? <laughs> They're yeah. a pair of bleeping bit, uh, Yeah, bit yeah, there. much stronger than that. Yeah. It's exactly what they are. And uh, I, I, I genuinely think they, the pair of them thought they had a job for life, mm. just being themselves. Yeah. And it's been gratifying to see how quickly. I knew Britain would cotton on to them very quickly. I'm, but um, America, that's just... A, equally pleasing that they, they seem to have tired of them uh, almost as quickly as well.